the uh, drama that is taking place over in Baltimore. I mean, yeah, I guess it is drama. I say yes and no. Um, we obviously saw where today Lamar Jackson put out that he is requesting a trade. Cool. Um, I like the stance for him. I mean, if he's trying to just continue to let the organization know that he's not happy with how the negotiations have went, that's a dope way to go about it. It's forceful. Um, we've seen it work. Roquan Smith, he just did this exact thing a year ago, right? They gave him the fifth-year option. He wasn't happy negotiating his own contract. He decides that he is going to play under the deal, but ultimately be looking for a trade. Signs the deal, plays, what, the first five games, I think it was, before they traded him to Baltimore. Goes to Baltimore, all-pro, $100 million contract. So it can work. Um, obviously, we know with quarterbacks, it's a lot more complicated in terms of the money, but we've seen this method technically work before. Now, the thing that, I just think it's a little bit redundant almost is the requesting of a trade when technically teams can trade for you right now. We know the situation technically, I don't think it's going to change anytime because the scenario is still the exact same. A team trades for Lamar right now, they still got to give up two first round picks and ultimately do the deal. Teams aren't trying to give up the two picks and do the deal. So I still feel like they're going to all be in this same log jam so to speak but i don't think it's going to impact in terms of like locker room stuff just being a guy who's been a part of locker rooms when contract negotiations are going on and stuff like that we typically typically you say man that dude is handling his business from a money standpoint but in terms of the play part man you don't have time to not work hard today or stop training or chill because you're looking at lamar post that he wants to get traded not nah. That's the business side of it. Lamar still is putting in what he needs to do to make sure he's the best player he can be. So his team's going to be doing the exact same thing. But that was definitely, you know, one of them things where I'm just like, yeah, Lamar, I mean, it's a nice post. It gets the people moving. Like, it's going to get the head waves and stuff like that. But I just don't think it's going to necessarily have an effect right now because the scenario is still the exact same. Lamar must have had a guy on the grounds over at those <laughs> coaches' meetings. Something, Did you bro. hear about when he I dropped did. it? I like, did. the exact moment yeah. that John Harbaugh was speaking to the media. Yeah. And he had to deal with all the questions right. like right it's off like, the It's like, no, nah, wait for it. Now nah, hit him. Yeah. <laughs> so he's definitely, he's doing it. he did not type up all that on the spot. We both know. I think it was a, wasn't it a Come thread, on, three or four tweets. Yes, we both know this. <laughs> and for, like you said, the timing, nothing is a coincidence at the NFL level, bro. Stuff like that, man, yeah. You do it like that for a reason. Because you want to put that coach on the hot seat. Because what happens when the organization puts out info? Lamar gets on the hot seat every day. Social media. So all he did was return the favor. So I do like that part, but that's like the petty game in terms of just the negotiations. But yeah, I don't I don't know. What do you feel on this thing, man? I don't think much has changed. Yeah. It is nice seeing drama unfold for yeah. the en enemy. Uncertainty. Right. Their franchise quarterback not happy once out. Mm -hmm. They already don't like have officially receivers. Officially on record saying once out too now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like that, no that's true too. It's almost like right. with Aaron Rodgers. We we knew all the signs were mm -hmm. pointing to the Jets. We hadn't heard from him. He right. finally said, I'm want to play football in yeah. 2023, and if I do play, I want it to be for the Jets. Lamar right. Jackson. We know there's been mm -hmm. some wayward talks with him and the Ravens. Yeah. We didn't know if he'd be interested in coming back though or not. Right. If they could start smoothing things out. But mm -hmm. it seemed like that boat has passed and he's ready to move on. Yeah. So you say like in that I don't know what really I don't know what really changes. At least now we know he I think would just, prefer to be traded, but right. I don't think he's got that much leverage in this. <laughs> he doesn't because the tag. But that's another conversation in terms of why like the draft picks don't like the tag options or even the fifth year options because once again, this only benefits who? The organization. This doesn't benefit Lamar. If Lamar wasn't tagged right now, Lamar, everybody bulks at the 230 to fully guarantee that he's asking for, right? We bulk at that. But if he was a unrestricted free agent, he would get that. The problem is he's not going to be able to be an unrestricted free agent for the next two seasons because of the tag this year. And they could turn around and tag him again the following year. So this is where the tag issue comes up and why you hear other players always complain about it. Or even when we were dealing with T.J. Watt and his scenario going into the fifth year option. It's the same concept. Yes, it's a bump in pay, but it's a one-year pay increase. 
this is a violent sport where it's a 100% injury rate. You want as much guaranteed money as you can. You don't care about what a fan says. You don't care about the technical roster completion and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, the team is going to continue to move on, regardless of if you are healthy or not, on their roster or not. So you can't put all of your thought process in the team in terms of when you're talking the financials because of that element of it. It's not always the prettiest. It's not always going to sound the best when you're talking about building a roster or camaraderie. But that is the nature of professional sports. That is where the business side has to take over. And for Lamar, he's just saying, I am not going to allow what my fans think, what the organization might think, or anybody else to make me come off of the number that I'm willing to put my body out there for. Because that, at the end of the day, is what he's doing. You all, everybody has their their price tag. I will risk X amount for this much money. And everybody's an individual. You can't tell another person what is appropriate or not an appropriate amount either. And that's the problem that we kind of have when it t- when it turns to these negotiations being public. Everybody's going to have an opinion. Man, you ain't got to get that much. Oh, man, 100 is just as fine. Or you could do this. Everybody has an opinion. But it's like, yo, it's not your money. It's not your pocket. It's not your body either. It's Lamar's. So for Lamar, I mean, I hope it work out. But, yeah, this, I don't see it changing anytime soon, man. I wonder him requesting this trade opens up negotiations or opens up talks for other teams. I don't know why exactly that would do that. Uh, you know what? Actually, maybe because going back to whenever they initially tagged him, remember all the stuff coming out mm-hmm. was like teams are saying they're not interested, and a part of that could yeah. be due to them negotiating the deal for the Ravens. Yeah. And then the Ravens are just going to match it and take on Lamar instead of having the Ravens do all the work. Yeah. So maybe if him requesting a trade ravens oblige that and say okay go ahead maybe there's more open dialogue between whatever organizations Mm -hmm. might be looking at lamar the ravens and lamar jackson as opposed to lamar just going out on his own and talking to the teams i feel if this was a perfect scenario yeah that would be the case to me i see this almost identical to the packers scenario if you're the packers right and you know Aaron Rodgers wants to go. He wants to play for the Jets. Are you going to just let him go for free? Or are you going to try to get that first-round pick that we talked oh, about? Oh, you're still getting picks. You see what I mean? You're still right, getting something right. so, in a trade. But, but once again, so if I'm Baltimore, I know if we're going to do the trade thing, I'm going to get at least two first rounds back for him. But the still the dilemma is this. At least when you're talking the Packers, they don't have the whole right of first refusal. It's just when the deal is complete, the deal is complete. Technically, any team that's negotiating with Lamar or the Ravens, they still have to do what? Show their hand. They got to show the offer, the full details. And the Ravens, because he's on a franchise tag, they can still say, man, that's a heck of a deal. You know what? Now nah, we're going to take, we're we, we going to decline that, take that I deal. I guess my, my thinking deal. is maybe they could do like a sign and trade. And what I'm saying is this if they are cool, then yeah, it works out, sign and trade. If they are dicks, then right. ultimately they say, you give me that new deal. That's the new deal you was going to offer Lamar. Well, hey, we're not giving up our quarterback. So, Lamar, we're going to give you that deal. Now you're stuck here. Hey, and that organization over there, you get to be pissed off and your quarterback gets to be pissed off because now we know right. that y'all was going to do that. That's why I don't think the deal changes for him because that part still is like looming. With the Jets, once they started doing all them training, we already knew. Man, that's a done. Like, it's not going to be a the Jets offer this deal contract the Rodgers and the Packers are just going to replace that or offer the same thing and now it's null and void nah but for the Ravens they can I just think that makes it like super messy right now obviously he doesn't want to play there anymore this is also true or at least why the money is wrong but that's the other part man they offer the money if they give him the money he wants I guarantee it changes heart in a second <laughs> but that's how it goes man that's the negotiations man who's your top team to go for Lamar right now it was Falcons. Give me Washington. Me. Can I get them commanders? I think Washington's got to be up there. Can I? Can we talk commanders? I would say the Patriots, actually. Patriots as well? I can see that. Trade Mac Jones. Give Lamar the deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, probably give up a couple picks or something. I just too. don't know how they felt about Mac. If they love Mac, then they're going to ride with Mac. Washington, we know it's wide open right now. They don't love anything over there just yet. They like some stuff, but don't let nothing. 
Who did they bring? It was Brissett. Brissett. And uh, they still got, um. oh, my goodness. Brissett's a type of quarterback the Ravens would roll with in the next year, <laughs> too. Is that even possible? Is there like uh, a... <laughs> he traded twice in the same offseason? Well, yeah, I was going to say, traded? he just signed, and he hasn't even played a snap yet. I mean, is there a month get, period where you got to hold off on the trade? We've seen guys get released with, you know, as soon as they sign, get released a month or two later. So, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I didn't know if there's like a two- or three-month waiting period. You nah. Wait it, until it's it's you not like a marriage, man. You got to wait 60 days before you could divorce it and all that. Nah, man, you good on this one. Mm-mm. Yeah, I could see the commanders yeah. giving up for set. That's my... I was like... The Commanders, I think them, um, and Ravens would somehow I, it's, would somehow get like ten wins with Brissett next year somehow. Well, because Baltimore <laughs> is still going to be good regardless of Lamar is there or not. They're going to be good. The difference is is just how high that ceiling is or not. We saw the one was going to play again with Tyler Huntley because they still know how to play good team ball don't turn the ball over, tackle on defense, run the ball, play good special teams. You do that, you're in every game. They do that. The turnovers is what kills them, as we saw with Tyler Huntley specifically. But that's, you know, their style of game right now. Very similar to our game. It didn't matter what, what, what Mitch was there. We still were going to have success. Kenny went there. We still had success. Rocky Kenny. And then when Kenny got better. But because of the style of play that we played, where we could run the ball, we was going to be physical, play good defense, and we weren't going to have the self-inflicted uh, penalties and stuff like that. So, yeah, with Boston, I think they still would be fine. I love them a lot more without Lamar, though. I'll tell you that. I could see them having a missed playoff type of season. Yeah. Seven wins, mm -hmm. something like that. But we'll always be competitive against us. Yeah. They could throw whoever out there, and it'll be competitive. Yeah. Cause we've seen it too many times. Yeah, RG3 yeah, 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 on just Wednesday chill, night. Just chill, just chill, just chill, Ryan Mallet. I knew you was going to drop that one right there. God RG3, damn. I was good. I'm like, yeah, stick with the RG3 one. I wasn't out there for that one. That Ryan Mallet one, bro, you – we all got one of the ones. We all everybody got a game. Everybody got we're just like, yo, how did that happen? That was that was that one for us. <laughs> that was that one for us, man. Yeah. Still can't believe it, man. But that was a good question to start it off though. Shout out to Matthew, man.